I can do. Ah, I've been practicing doing deep breathing. So, <laughs> look, I blew up a balloon. Ah, yeah, that one's toast now. It has to go into the used pile. Um, I try to make sure that they're new balloons, not ones that I have previously blown up. Um, but I will be blowing them up again as we go. <laughs> But you saw how I was not able to blow it up any further. So I'm working on getting it to where I can blow it up further in one one blast. So I've had a lot of positive comments about the daily Bible reading. And I'm really thrilled that everybody's enjoying it. I am enjoying doing it um, this morning. <laughs> All those names you know why couldn't it be John or Jacob or you know Marion or <laughs> Steve <laughs> um, and I have to try to remember when I'm reading them that they are based on Jewish Hebrew and um, there are certain ways you pronounce those um, syllables and I'm just not that well practiced in it but it, I'm enjoying reading it. Um, like I said, um, for reading ahead, if you are doing the 90-day challenge, you should have read through chapter 28. Uh, we got up to 21. I'm going to shoot tomorrow to get up to what day 3 for the 90-day challenge is. But we'll see. You know, the voice has to behave, that kind of thing. And of course, tomorrow is laundry day. My husband doesn't have a class till 2.30. So I believe what I'm going to do is go ahead and pre-record tomorrow's. Simply because being out at laundry and then having to wait till he's done. You know, goes off to school. He won't leave till 2. He'll be sitting over here playing his game or talking. You do one of the other YouTubers that he talks with, gamers, and <sighs> makes it difficult. Yesterday we had um, our Comcast and cable, and our internet was completely down from, I want to say I was watching about, it was close to noon because I tried to turn change the channel and it just went <laughs> black screen no signal and I was like okay well then I'll watch some YouTube on my uh, iPad while I'm sewing nope so I did some sewing to nothing no sounds it was rather nice but, uh, you know, I'm used to having the TV on or radio on or something. And I did have a large radio um, CD uh, cassette tape in the bedroom. But there were some issues with it that I could never get resolved with the speakers. And um, so I'd taken it to Goodwill with a note on it that the wire speakers needed to be changed. Um, I didn't know how to do that. My husband wasn't going to mess with it so that whoever, you know, if they chose to go ahead and sell it that way or if they chose to fix it because I do have a guy back there that likes to work on things here. So, but while I was sewing, I realized I couldn't get all the masks that I was making done. Um, so I go upstairs to sew on them this morning. And of course, you know, I come back downstairs about 2 o'clock and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to post the pictures on Etsy. Internet's down again. So I don't know when I'll be able to do that. I don't know when I'll be able to upload this one. So uh, it should be rather interesting. 
Now, I haven't gotten any further with the Tunisian shawl. Um, I did get a couple of rows, a couple of more rows done. And like I said, I'm really enjoying it now that it's actually forming more of that triangle shawl. And, you know, being able to block it. I have one more ball of this. I'm finishing this off. Um, about another round and a half to get this this colorway done. And then I'll do the dark gray. And then that'll be it for this little lap can. Should be able to get that done tonight. You know, while I'm watching TV, watching YouTube. Whatever we're doing. You know, that kind of thing. And I am going to talk about something that has happened this week. And it has to do with the Jacob Blake shooting. First of all, it's sad that this man was shot in front of his children in the car. But there are two videos out there. One is on the driver's side and one is on the other side when the police were attempting to arrest him on the arrest warrant that he had out. And they were telling him to drop the knife. They tased him. He got up, went around. And he's well known to the police. He has quite a few charges, a couple of felonies against him in the past. Um, one of them was a felony in Involving a gun in a bar. Um, and they know that he's armed because he's been armed and since then that they have arrested him. But he was told to stop. Not once, several times. He chose not to. And the way that he was reaching into the car, he was not getting into the car. One could only assume he was reaching for a weapon. So unfortunately, this fellow now is paralyzed, I think, from the waist down because of his actions. Um, he just didn't listen. Now, he knew he had an arrest warrant out against him. Why wouldn't you listen? What was he going to do? Pull a weapon out on these police officers and then one of the kids might have been hurt? I you know, anything could have happened because of his stupidity as well. But the thing that I find saddest is that people continue to uplift these criminals who do stupid shit, quite frankly. Don't listen to what you're told to do. What do you expect is going to happen? I mean, really. Um, I do think it's sad that these police officers took the money for body cams, the department, and they didn't purchase them. Um, body cams could have gone a whole long way to show us exactly what happened. So, but like I said, there are two videos, one from each side of the car. And you can see him fighting with the police officers as they're trying to arrest him, being tased, being told to drop the knife. But here's where it gets even worse. The idiots that are rioting. And I'm going to call them idiots. And the Black Lives Matter rioters who set an apartment complex on fire, trapping people in it, burning down businesses that had nothing to do with this shooting. Nothing. You're idiots. And you're idiots if you think it's okay to do that kind of stuff. I'm sorry, I'm pissed. I am tired of the media race baiting constantly they've been doing this for years 
And then they don't bother to show full videos. They show a video that they think's going to make their little lies worth more. Benjamin Crump, he's a well-known liar, that, liar lawyer. He's lied many cases. So, yeah, I don't have hope for people who follow this ideology. I don't have hope for people who continue to do stupid stuff to people who had nothing to do with the incident. Nothing. That would be like me going into your home and beating the hell out of you just because I'm pissed at somebody. Stupid. Okay, rant over. <laughs> it just annoys me. You know? People are getting ridiculous. You have one party who won't condemn the the violence and the rioting. It's like they enjoy it. And they keep calling for more of it. No. That's not how you change things. In fact. Yeah, I'm going to continue the rant. In fact, I think you're actually making more racists out of this. I just do. People turn hard hearts against you when they see that you're burning a place of business that had nothing to do with the incident. Innocent people, innocent, had nothing to do with the incident. Now, I'm going to try to calm myself because it does annoy me. Okay, now we're going to get into some what in tarnation because I have nothing to show you other than anger. Kitten survives 30 mile drive in engine compartment of a car. Animal rescuers in Britain said a kitten survived a 30 mile journey under the hood of a car and now has a new home with the vehicle's owner. The RSPCA said Rosalind O'Brien had spotted a kitten on her property the day before she drove 30 miles from Cheshire, England to Winsford to visit her mother. O'Brien arrived at her mother's home and heard the kitten meowing from the engine compartment of her Toyota Yaris. I didn't know those cars were even still around. It's about a 30 mile journey and I was doing about 65 miles per hour for part of it, so he was so lucky he didn't get burned or anything, O'Brien said. It's usually the fan belt that gets him. The woman said the kitten hid itself deep inside the inner workings of the vehicle when she attempted to rescue him. She ended up calling the RSPC A for help. Inspector Karen Goodman James responded to the scene. It wasn't an easy rescue, she said. It was quite tricky getting the kitten out. I had to lie on the ground, getting quite wet and dirty, as I moved engine parts around until we could free him. <clears throat> then I took him to the RSPCA Stapley Grange Cattery to be cleaned up and cared for. O'Brien said the kitten will return soon to her vehicle, but this time in the passenger compartment on the way home. I think fate wanted me to have him, or at least he did, O'Brien said. She said she has named the kitten Yaris after the vehicle in which he was found. And this little kitten is a tuxedo kitty. A kitten after my own heart. We've had many tuxedo kitties, and they always have a very interesting personality. No pictures. Couldn't find one. Maybe there'll be one up some somewhere today, but I couldn't find any when I was reading the story. Contents of a mysterious safe left on a New York farm to remain mystery. A mysterious safe that appeared on a New York State farmer's property with a note attached will remain a mystery for the time being, the farmer said. 
The large safe estimated to weigh between 500 to 1,600 pounds appeared in a field on Kirk Mathis's farm in Barre. With a note attached that read, If you can open this, you can have what's inside. Math- Mathis said deputies had to disperse a crowd of people who attempted to force it open. They took a sledgehammer to it, knocked off the dial and handle, he told Wham TV. They worked on the hinges, kind of beat it up. Mathis said he relocated the safe to a secret location. And for the time being, he isn't revealing where it's being housed. My personal feeling is, leave it as a mystery, he said. He said the safe mystery has proven to become a welcome distraction from the COVID-19 pandemic and the upcoming presidential election. If you open it, the show is over. In these times with the virus and the politics, it might get people a chance to see their problems or troubles aside and have a lot of fun talking about it, he said. The safe eventually could become part of a planned local history museum in the town of Bari. It could be holding millions of dollars. It could have confetti in there. You have no idea. So just dream, said Cindy Valley's shout of the Bari Betterment Committee, one of the groups working on the museum's plans. And there's video and, of course, a link. Bear wanders into California grocery store, steals a bag of chips. A customer at a California grocery store captured video of a shoplifting bear strolling into the store and nonchalantly walking off with a bag of chips in its mouth. Adina Bedo said she was leaving the Safeway store in Kings Beach with her cart when she nearly ended up in a head-on collision with the bear. So there was this woman walking out of Safeway and almost into a bear, and that was me. I'm the woman, Beto said in a Facebook post. She said a witness made a high-pitched sound that caused her to look up in time to avoid walking right into the animal. Beto captured video of the bear eating some garbage from next to a trash can and went to take her groceries to her van. The woman said she looked moments later and discovered the bear had wandered into the store through the front doors. She filmed as the animal grabbed a pack of Tostito chips in its mouth and left the store without paying for his snack. Bears. They're very interesting characters. <laughs> Covered bridge damaged by bus hit again during a TV news report. Oh boy. A historic covered bridge in Illinois was damaged by a bus just one day after its reopening and was struck a second time during the filming of the TV news segment. The Long Grove Covered Bridge, located in Chicago suburb Long Grove, had a grand reopening Friday after extensive repairs following damage from a tall box truck in June of 2018. And less than 24 hours later, it was damaged again by a chartered school bus. Her GPS warned her she should not proceed with the type of vehicle she was driving. The occupants on the bus convinced her to proceed, which she did and subsequently struck the bridge. Lake County Sheriff's Office spokesman Sergeant Christopher Covelli told the Lake and McHenry County scanner. A WLS TV crew was interviewing locals about the damage to the bridge Wednesday when another vehicle struck the bridge. The sound of the crash was recorded by the news station's camera. The vehicle left the scene but was later identified as a box truck carrying medical supplies. Authorities said they identified the truck driver who told deputies he had thought the sound of the crash was just his load shifting. 
The driver advised he thought the bridge was a two-lane bridge, and he hugged the right side of the bridge. This caused the top of the box truck to strike the top of the bridge, Cavelli said. <laughs> Traffic citations are pending against the bus driver and the driver of the box truck, the sheriff's office said. Village officials said the crash caused damage to the bridge, but it remains structurally sound, and the latest round of repairs are expected to take about a month to complete. Officials said they are considering installing physical barriers on each side of the bridge to prevent two tall vehicles from attempting to pass through. And that would be an excellent idea. Tan dog, loose in traffic, turns out to be a runaway goat. Police in Pennsylvania said officers responding to a report of a tan dog loose in rush hour traffic were surprised to discover the animal was actually a goat. A goat. The Salisbury Township Police Department said in a Facebook post that the officers were summoned to the area of Broadway and Cedarsville Road, where the morning commuting hours Thursday morning on a report of an animal on the loose. The animal was described as a tan dog, but officers quickly realized it was a goat. Despite having a slightly awkward uh, bark, and an enormous appetite for eating seat belts in the back of the police car. She really is a friendly girl, the department joked. The goat was taken away in a police car. The department said it hopes the owner will come forward to claim the animal. It's a cute goat. <sighs> I don't know if I would use this certain facility. And here's why. Toilets with transparent walls installed in two Tokyo parks. Yes, transparent. A pair of Tokyo parks are attracting extra attention for their unusual new features. Public toilets with transparent walls. The restrooms designed by Shiguru Ban are architects as part of the Nippon Foundation's Tokyo Toilet Project feature see-through walls that turn opaque when a user enters the facility and locks the door. The restrooms installed at Yoyogi Fukamachi Mini Park and Haru no Agawa Community Park are designed to allow those in need of facilities to quickly determine their cleanliness and whether they are already occupied. There are two things we worry about when entering a public restroom, especially those located at a park, said Tokyo Toilet Project's website. States the first is cleanliness, the second is whether anyone is inside. The walls change from transparent to frosted opaque when the door lock is activated. This allows users to check the cleanliness and whether anyone is using the toilet from the outside, the website states. At night, the facility lights up the park like a beautiful lantern. Users said remembering to lock the doors is of extra importance. Since a user inside the facility can't tell whether the, wheel, the walls appear transparent or frosted from the outside. Each of the two facilities includes a men's toilet, a women's toilet, and a mixed-use toilet. My luck, I'd turn the lock and it wouldn't go opaque. So I think I'd pass on that. All right, guys. Sorry for the rant. It just, it just annoys me that people are continuing to destroy people's property, their businesses, their livelihoods. 
when they weren't a part of the incident. They had nothing to do with it. So, um, I do apologize for the rant. I'm leaving it up. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to post this because I don't know if the internet is back up yet, but I will attempt to. And I'll see you again soon. Everybody have a great day. Remember to be kind.